When building antennas, it's important to ensure that the antenna is resonant on the frequency you wish to use it on. One way we can do this is with an antenna analyzer. The analyzer we'll be learning about today is called a Nano VNA. It is available quite cheaply and gives you a handy visualization of the resonance curve of your antenna each time you adjust the antenna length. Right, Haley. so last time we built a ballon to go at the center of a dipole and you quickly soldered a couple of bits of wire onto, uh, onto the ends of the dipole center. And I think you cut those to sort of roughly the right length for a, a 20 meter dipole, I think. Yeah, that's right. Cool, so, so how long is each leg at the moment? Uh, I think it's, each leg is five meters at the moment, approximately. Great, so that's sort of a quarter of a wavelength on 20 meters uh, for each half. Um, now we've not played this, uh, this aerial out with a radio yet, but what we're going to do is to try and cut it down to exactly the right length. Should we head inside and connect up that aerial as it is at the moment to a VNA, which is a vector network analyzer. And that's going to let us see exactly where this aerial is resonant. OK, so you've got a nano VNA. These come in at around about the 50 pound mark. Uh, and connected. before we connect the aerial, we're going to calibrate this, uh, this VNA. And that's basically telling it you know, what a 50 ohm uh, impedance aerial should look like um, and what a sh short circuit looks like and what an open circuit looks like. Okay, we're going to use the Nano VNA Saver Windows application. You can do this if you're using a Nano VNA, you can do it all on the device itself, um, but actually it's easier to connect it to a PC with a micro USB cable um, and then just drive it with a keyboard and mouse and it, it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to use. One thing it's worth looking at, by the way, on this software is if you press the display button down at the bottom left, you can use all sorts of different graphs uh, with the VNA. Um, down at the bottom, there's the display charts option. And we've gone for S11 VSWR. That's simply the, the standing wave ratio on that first channel. The other one that's useful to know about, by the way, is up in the options, you can enable that show lines tick box. If you don't have that on, you'll just get a lot of very tiny dots. Um, if you enable that show lines, then it, uh, it makes it a lot easier to read the graph. Great. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to set the frequencies that we're interested in. And this is a 20 meter dipole. So ideally, we want it to be resonant about sort of 14.2 megahertz, which is in the middle of the 20 meter band. So you'll see on there, you've got uh, the center frequency in that box up to top left. So if you put 14.2 in there, and then we're going to decide how far either side of that we're going to look at the aerial. And for a, a sort of starting point, we'll go quite wide because we're not really sure where it is. So maybe if we go for a span of uh, perhaps five megahertz, that's that's way wider than we'll uh, we'll end up with, but it'll it'll give us a good visualization to start with. Now we're ready to calibrate. Uh, you can select the serial port that your nano VNA is connected to. That's down in the bottom left. So we need to tell the uh, tell the application where the, the VNA is. So if you click the little um, rescan button, that's great. So you can see now down at the bottom left, it's got the serial port listed as COM3 and in brackets nano VNA. So if you press the calibration uh, button down in the bottom left, I'd use the calibration assistant wizard here. This takes you through all of the steps one at a time and tells you which connectors you need to, uh, to use. You'll find when you buy one of these VNAs, it generally comes with a calibration kit. And that's a, a selection of different connectors with, uh, with, with different types. So in the, this case, it's going to first of all ask you to connect a short circuit. So this is literally the inside of that connector connected to the outside onto port zero. That's the, uh, the top port on the VNA. We're now going to disconnect it and leave it open circuit. So this is an infinite impedance that we're measuring now. And again, press OK. And finally, we're going to connect a 50 ohm load. So this is the, uh, the, the sort of target that we're aiming for. It's pretty much a 50 ohm resistor built into a little SMA connector. So you can screw that into that connector and press OK once more. That's great. Now, that's all we need to do to look at an antenna. If you were going to do something like a filter where you want to go from input to output, 
that's when you'd use that second socket. And there are a couple more steps that we'd need to do in the calibration if you were doing that. But for an antenna, what's called a one port calibration is enough. So you can just press uh, the apply button here and then we'll be uh, ready to go. We're now ready to connect the aerial. So you can unscrew that 50 ohm load and instead connect your coax coming in from your dipole. That's the one, yep. You'll probably need an adapter because most HF antennas will tend to use a, an SO239 or PL259 connector or perhaps a BNC. But you can buy those adapters pretty cheaply. Cool, so if you now press the sweep button, what that's going to do is to measure that SWR across that frequency range. Cool, so you can see now the line, rather than being along the bottom of the graph, is now a variable SWR from 12 to 1, that's very, very high at the left, uh, down to about 5 to 1 on the right. Now that's, that's still very high, and also it's looking like that dip's happening at quite a high frequency, which suggests that the aerial isn't, isn't long enough. Now, we can't see a minimum at the moment. So what I'd suggest is if you open out that sweep range a bit, if you change it to maybe uh, a 10 megahertz span, and then run a sweep again, let's see what that does. Cool, so you can now see where it's resonant. Now it's, it's not particularly low SWR at resonance, but it's not bad. If you drag one of those markers onto it, so grab one of the, uh, the red or the green or the blue, down there. That's sort of sitting at around 18 megahertz by the looks of things. Um, now that's a long way, a lot higher than the 14.2 that we want, uh, which suggests that our aerial is quite a bit too short for 20 meters. Uh, now, where is it exactly? 17.6 17, 17 uh, megs. So I'll tell you what we can do is rather than soldering a bit more onto this aerial, let's make this a, a 17 meter aerial instead, which means we're going to aim for a resonance at about 18.1 megahertz. So let's get a closer look at this now. Um, if you change your center frequency to 18 megahertz and change the span to one, we're just going to, to narrow in on that uh, area of interest and do another sweep. Cool, so you now see a little bit uh, more detail of where we are and you can put a marker there and find out what frequency it's at. So it's currently at about 17.6 megahertz. Now, if we wanted this to be resonant on 18.1 megahertz instead of currently 17.6 megahertz, that means that we need to make the antenna a little bit shorter. Higher frequency is shorter, lower frequency is longer. And to do that, we need to work it out. We're about half a megahertz, 500 kilohertz to lower, uh, to lower in frequency at the moment. So we take 0.5 megahertz, divide that by the frequency we're going for, 18.1, and that will work out as 0.0276, so roughly 3%. So we want to take 3% of the length off of each half of the uh, antenna. At the moment, each half is about a quarter wave, so quarter, uh, a quarter of 17 meters, about four and a quarter meters. Uh, so if you multiply that up, uh, 4.25 times 0.0276, that'll come out as around about 12 centimetres off of each leg of the dipole. Because it's easier to cut stuff off than it is to solder it back on, uh, we'll go a little bit less than that to start with, so maybe 10 centimetres off of each side to start with. Make sure you cut that off of one side and then the same off of the other side, keep that the same uh, on both legs, don't kind of trim it off both uh, one side twice. Um, but otherwise you should be good to go. So let's grab some wire cutters and head outside. I'm going to take about 10 centimetres off of each end. I've got some wire cutters. I'm going to measure that with a ruler. Perfect. Uh, about 10 centimetres will be about there. that's now 10 centimeters short I'm going to do that on the other end as well. Perfect. Now you might find that the reason that it's not at the frequency we expected it to be to start with is just the height above ground of the aerial. If it's if it's lower to the ground it will be resonant on a different frequency than if it's a lot higher up. Normally in a perfect world you'd want to get the sort of the, the middle of your 
dipole at least a quarter of a wavelength above ground if you can. So for a 20 meter dipole, you'd want that center up at about five meters above ground or 15 foot. Um, sometimes that's not possible, but it may just mean you need to adjust that length. So now that you've done that, you can see where our resonant frequency was before. It was about 17.6. If you now press the sweep button again, hopefully we'll see that move across to the right to a higher frequency. And it has, it's moved up a bit, although I think that was actually just the, the graph rescaling slightly. But now that minimum is on the green marker, which is 18.0 megahertz. That's much higher. That's not quite as high as the center of the 17 meter band, but you can see you've got it into a, a, a much better position. Ideally, for a dipole, you'd want to get that SWR down to about one and a half to one or less. Um, but the reason that it's up at two and a half is probably just the low height of the aerial. I suspect if you could just get that aerial a little bit higher off the ground, um, then that SWR would all come down uh, quite a bit. Maybe also get it away from any other adjacent metal bits. You can see it's, it's still just a fraction too long. Um, but you can see the effect that taking that 10 centimeters off has, has had. If you took another maybe two centimeters off, it would just refine it that little tiny bit higher up uh, to kind of 18.1 megs. But you know what? This is probably close enough. Yeah, the, this aerial is now resonant roughly where we want. It's going to change a little bit anyway as the, the wind blows it around, as it gets wet, as the ground gets wet or dry, um, it will move. So you don't need to get it absolutely spot on. But you can see now that the SWR is better than three to one across the whole of the 17 meter band. That's 18.068 up to 18.168. Um, and you can plug this in and make some contacts on 17 meters now if you wanted.